Hello, we're now going to talk about some environmental impacts of computing. This will definitely draw on some knowledge you should hopefully have from subjects like science and maybe geography. But it's the sort of topic which some students just go, yeah, 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 I know this already. I don't need to actually learn it or revise it. You do. There are quite specific points you need to make. We can't just say basic things like, oh, computers are bad for the environment. We have to be a bit more detailed than that. So let me go through some points which I think are going to be helpful to you. And let's start by talking about the manufacturing of computers. So how is manufacturing, how is making the computers potentially bad for the environment, but also potentially good for the environment? Well, if we start with some of the negatives, because there are probably more negatives than positives here, the actual technology we use is generally made in a big factory, like we can see here, massive warehouse type thing, lots of robots being involved potentially, along with humans. This will consume a lot of electricity. And this is where the weaker students don't, sort of elaborate on this, they just sort of assume that using electricity is a bad thing, but not necessarily, right? Using electricity is inevitable nowadays. Electricity could well come from renewable sources like wind farms, like solar panels. However, a lot of it won't. So if the electricity comes from a non-renewable source, it is therefore bad for the environment because we're burning some fuels to get there, which cannot be remade, they cannot be renewed. And once these are made in the factories, because they're typically manufactured a long way away from the UK, they will need to be shipped across halfway around the world to get to the UK. They could be flown in planes, which are also not good for the environment. These massive container ships use a lot of fossil fuels, which again are non-renewable, so we can't ever get them back, but also they contribute to things like the greenhouse effect, which will cause global warming. Another nice specific technical point which you can talk about in answers is the fact that computers are made up of lots and lots of little components, including small amounts of quite rare materials and metals and resources which are finite. Again, these are non-renewable resources. You can't just create gold easily in a lab. Once it's used, it is used. So these are done in very small parts, which is one of the issues because First of all, these have to get mined. So we have to get these materials somehow from the ground, which are often very, very damaging to the local habitat. Sometimes this is done in less developed countries. So there is potentially some ethical exploitation here. But ultimately, if you're making a massive hole in the ground like this, it's going to damage the habitat forever. And also we are depleting these finite materials. And because they're used in such small amounts, it's really hard to recover these at the other end. Your phone might well contain gold inside it, but ultimately it's in such a small quantity that it's almost impossible to actually recover at the end because it's just not cost effective and because it might be really hard to access. Now, this is all quite negative, although we have got to try and find some benefits environmentally as well because your answers need to be quite balanced. Now, one of the benefits potentially could be that manufacturers are trying to recycle a bit more. They're trying to use materials which have previously been used the benefit of this is, well, that material was mined and was causing damage, but at least we're not compounding it by just chucking it away and then doing more mining. If we can reuse that lithium or that silver or that copper multiple times, then we're not having to remine it and it's not being depleted at the rate that it would be if we're having to get new copper, new gold, new lithium every time you made a new device. Now, manufacturing is all about actually creating the computer or creating the technology. But once we actually have it in our hands and we're using it, of course, Technology requires electricity to power the devices. Like I say, if you're aiming for the top marks in these questions, you need to be a little bit more precise and say something like, well, this often comes from non-renewable sources. This is potentially getting worse as we have more embedded systems in our homes with loads of smart devices, which all also consume potentially more electricity than they would if they were not smart devices. But one of the benefits of modern technology is that typically the newer technology is more energy efficient than the previous technology. And what that means is less electricity is being wasted and is being dissipated through heat or noise or things like that, which is just a waste. So you might have a very energy inefficient TV or monitor, for example, and you might decide to upgrade it to a more energy efficient one so that it's using less electricity as it's working. And other components like power supplies are often labeled based on their efficiency. So a, a titanium power supply is more efficient than a bronze power supply. Power supplies are very wasteful actually. So 
even but it's called 80 plus here because it needs to have over 80 percent efficiency now what that means in reality is 20 percent of the electricity is being wasted through heat and noise and things like that which is quite a lot when you think about it and all of that if it's coming from a non-renewable source is just a complete waste and is bad environmentally now, a couple of points which are sort of a mix between using technology and disposing technology. Well, as lots of you will know from painful experience, lots of smartphones and other devices are not particularly durable and they break quite easily. They can be very hard to repair. Often if you send your broken phone to an insurance company, they'll just replace it because it's too hard to repair. And so they'd rather get you a new one, which as we've talked about is potentially bad because it causes more mining, more shipping and all these other negative impacts however one small improvement in recent years is companies are realizing that actually they probably can't get away with this for much longer i'm sure some companies design their devices to be deliberately hard to repair so that you buy new ones but some companies are starting to be a little bit better about this and are enabling repairing to be done more easily the key benefit of that is we're not having to dispose of our devices which comes with its own problems so if we focus on some of the impacts of disposing our technology once we're done with it often we just chuck out the devices and they go to landfill sites this is still our main way of getting rid of rubbish essentially just putting it in a big pile putting dirt over the top and trying to forget about it not particularly sophisticated and bad environmentally because when we put devices in landfills they may well contain toxic chemicals especially in things like batteries which over time could seep out that could harm local wildlife it could maybe go into a water supply for human beings. That could be really quite negative. And because they contain so many different materials in such small quantities, if it's under a big mound of rubbish, nobody's going to go in searching for that tiny bit of gold, that tiny bit of platinum. They're going to be left and never recovered. So we're just wasting these resources. And as you'll know from science and geography, some materials just break down very, very slowly, like plastics. So they'll stay there for such a long time and won't ever really deteriorate enough to go back to how the environment was before. But some positive actions which humans can do to help the environment when we're disposing our devices. Well, of course, we could donate technology. That's enabling it to get used by someone else. It means other devices aren't getting bought. And that could be a good ethical point to talk about as well. You could link it to an ethical point, perhaps. Lots of suppliers are trying to now offer more refurbished devices. A refurbished device is where a used device gets fixed or maybe slightly improved and might get a new battery to try and make it almost like a new phone, which has a benefit of being cheaper for a customer, but also again, is preventing an another phone getting manufactured in its place, which just adds to the issues. And of course you are able to recycle instead of throwing out devices where people try and break apart the device and try and reuse bits and pieces. It may not be able to reuse all of it. I'm sure quite a lot still goes to landfill and those really rare materials, because they're so small in the device, very hard to recycle, although parts of it can be reused in other future devices. 